Right, but they were busy. But they made time to pray for you. Amen? Amen. Let's make time to pray for people. Amen? Hallelujah. You'll have to make time. Because it ain't just going to fall in your lap. I don't know about y'all. I don't think y'all just lounge around all day and have nothing at all to do. Amen? You have to make time to pray. Amen? And make sure you do it. Hallelujah. Well, my better half's not here this morning, but tomorrow we will be married for 25 years. And I am so grateful for that. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's give her a hand even though she ain't here. You know too? Hallelujah. Anybody that can put up with me for that long deserves a hand clap, a pat on the back, and a hug. Amen? <laughs> Anything else you can give her. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> All right, in the Word of God this morning, turn with me to 2 Timothy, the third chapter, the 16th verse. We're going to endeavor this morning. That's a nice fancy word, isn't it? We're going to endeavor this morning to finish up what we started on last Sunday. Has been rolling in my soul. Hallelujah. You remember a couple of Sundays ago, we spent some time on Romans 8 and 28. You should know it by now. You don't even have to turn there. And we know that all things work together for good, Sister Nancy. Amen. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Amen. Amen. Have you ever heard the old saying, grin and bear it? Yeah. Sometimes that's what you have to do, Brother Sweet. Just put a smile on, like Brother Sweet said this morning, I think. Just put a smile on. That old song that Tyler sings, I just smiled and I'm going by. Amen. Seems the devil never learns. Put a smile on your face and just keep on trucking. Amen? Just keep on going. Trials are going to happen. Things are going to happen. But you have a promise today from God's Word that all things are going to work together for your good. Amen? If you will allow God to take those things that have happened in your life, He can take all of that and work it all together and turn it out for your good. Do you remember what Joseph said to his brothers? He said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. To bring to pass what you see here today. Here he is, right hand man to Pharaoh, got the barn stocked full of food for the seven years of famine that never would have happened had his brothers not sold him into slavery, had he not been sold to Potiphar, had he not been put in prison, had he not been let out of prison to, be, to, be, uh, to interpret the dream of Pharaoh about the seven lean and the seven fat. None of that would have happened. None of that. He said, God had... This, listen, God has used all of it. I know you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Same thing for you today. What your enemy, Brother Bill, means for evil, God will use for your good. Amen? I hope somebody helped me preach this morning. What the enemy means for your demise... God means for your arise. Amen? Hallelujah. He means for your good this morning. And He'll use it for that. So we, we began last week talking about the promises of God. And I can't think of... Uh, there ain't no way that I can throw all the promises out here. There's too many of them. But I for sure, if I made a list of every promise, I couldn't leave this one out that we were talking about before we got on this. That all things work together for our good. That's a pretty good promise, isn't it? And we ain't just talking about something, you know, some shot in the dark. We're talking about the Word of God. And the Bible says that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All Scripture is inspired. That means from Genesis all the way to Revelations. Oh, but wait a minute, my Torah brethren, who say that the only inspired Scripture is the Old Testament. I beg to differ. Amen? Amen. I believe that the same Spirit that inspired the writers of the Old inspired the writers of the New. Amen? Amen? I don't believe the Old Testament within itself is complete. Amen? Amen? I don't believe the New Testament within itself is complete. Because you have to have the two to see how the one points toward the other. Amen? Mm -hmm. The Old Testament tells us and shows us shadows and pictures and types. Oh, hallelujah, of that which is to come. And then we see it take place in the New Testament. Whenever Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, God in the flesh, 
lays down His life on the old rugged cross, then we can look back and say, Aha! Now I understand some of what I read over there in the Old Testament, Brother Bill. <clears throat> if not for the new, we would still be thinking, Well, I should be glad when that Messiah comes that they've been talking about. Amen? But He gave us more inspired Scripture through the New Testament to let us know that the Messiah has came. That He walked up the Via Della Rosa. That He laid His life down on the old rugged cross. That when He said it is finished, He had accomplished that which the Father had been speaking through the prophets all the way through the Old Testament. That He would send a Messiah, a Redeemer, a Lamb that was able to take away, not just cover, but take away the sin of the world. So we find all kinds of promises in the Word of God. And we learned last week that these promises are not just for some men from thousands of years ago for the bill, but they're for you. Amen. Amen. You say, wait a minute, you mean me? Oh yeah, honey, God is mindful of man. Amen. I don't understand why God is mindful of us, but I sure am glad He is, and I don't spend no time questioning Him about it either. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I don't know why He loves me, but I don't spend no time asking Him either. I don't want Him to change His mind. Hallelujah. I know He loves me. I don't understand it, but that's all right. I don't want it to. Amen? Amen. All Scripture given me inspiration of God is profitable. Profitable for who? Profitable for you. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, and I'm going to hit a few of these real fast so we can move on and finish up today. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Amen. All of His promises, Brother Beal, are yea and amen, meaning period. Amen. They are established. Once He has promised you something, God is not a man that He should lie. You see, man lies. You ever run across a man lies? God don't lie. I've heard people say you can't believe nothing that comes out of their mouth. Well, you can believe everything that comes out of His mouth. Amen. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain. Amen. I'm losing my notes. My word will remain forever. In the beginning was the word, and there's never going to be an end. But if there was, the word would still be there. Amen? We're getting ready to go into eternity. Eternity future. Amen? Sooner or later, once you have passed through this old life, whether you go by way of the rapture or whether you go by way of the grave, you're going to live forever somewhere. Either in heaven or in hell. That's a promise. Amen? He gave us everything that He had. His only begotten Son so that this old world would not die and go to hell. So that we would have a way of escape, Brother Bill. So that we who could not be saved on our own works could not be saved by our own goodness. And if you're, if you're counting on your own goodness and own works today, you're counting on a broken stick. Amen? There is no way you can save yourself. I don't care how good you are or how good you think you are, you will never be good enough to get in unless you come by way of the blood. Jesus Christ and Him crucified is the only way. That's a promise for us today. And it's time that we realized that when we read this book, it's not just a book of yesterday. It's not just a book of the future. But it's a book for today. It is a personal thing. He wrote this not just for Abraham's benefit. He sent this not just for Isaac and Jacob's benefit. He sent this for your benefit, Sister Nancy. This letter is written to you. This promissory is written for you. And that's what we talked about last week. All the promises of God. And we talked about how that the prophets, God promised the Messiah through the prophets, and it came to pass. Isaiah would say his name would be called Emmanuel. Amen. His name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, Prince of Peace. Amen. Almighty God, Everlasting Father. The prophet would say that a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son. Amen. And all of those things took place. Jesus would say that as Moses lifted up 
the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He would tell His disciples that I must needs go to Jerusalem and they're going to deliver me up and they're going to crucify me. And the disciples would say, no, no, Lord, please. It ain't going to happen. And He would say, get behind me, Satan. These things must come to pass. And you know what happened? He went to Jerusalem. He was turned over to the authorities. They took Him to a mock court. They took Him to trial. And they began to ridicule and false accuse Him just like the prophet said it would happen. And He walked up the Via Della Rosa after taking the stripes on His back for our healing and the crown of thorns on His head. And He walks up Calvary just like He told Him He would. And He lays down His life just like He told Him He would. And three days later, He comes up out of the grave just like He told Him He would. Amen? But during that time, from the time that He died until the time that He arose, some of the disciples forgot His promise. They got a little discouraged, Brother Sleese. They got like we do sometimes. Well, I think God just forgot about me. I think God's left me. Well, He said He'd never leave you. He'd never forsake you. I think God just don't love me. Oh, honey, but He loves you so much that He gave the very best that He had. Amen? So the disciples get a little discouraged even though He told them. He said, I'm going to lay my life down but I'm going to take it back up. Amen? He said, you can tear this temple down in three days. I'll rebuild it. He would tell them, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Yet, whenever they couldn't see Him, when they couldn't feel Him, they couldn't walk by faith, they begin to get discouraged. That's what happens to us. The Bible says four times, the just shall live by faith. You must have faith, not in what you feel, Sister Nancy. You probably know that as well as anybody in here. Not in what you feel, but in what God has promised. Yes, amen. amen? Not in what you feel, but in what God has promised. Because He has promised us today that He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will go with us all the way. So whenever you feel like God has forsaken you, He ain't. When you feel like that He ain't nowhere to be around, He is. Because He said He'd never leave you. Amen? He'd never forsake you. When you feel like there's no forgiveness for you, all oh, you remember what we spent several weeks talking about. If we confess our sins, come on. If we confess our sins, if your old pride and your old self pity is keeping you from confessing them, you're the only one standing in the way of your forgiveness. Because He promised us in His Word, Brother Bill, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and He is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's His promise, Brother Sleeves. So when I sin, and I do, oh, but I don't lose no tithe payers over that. Does it come to a shock to you this morning, Brother Bill, that Brother Billy sins every now and then? Amen? All of us do. But when I do, I stand on His promise. I don't say, oh God, help me to be a better me and help me to be the best me that I can be. No, I say, God, I've sinned. Forgive me. I confess right now that I've sinned. You may not like it. People don't like it. Sometimes they don't like it that God forgives you. Amen? You remember the prodigal son and his brother? He didn't like it because Daddy forgave him. Oh, you know what? I ain't forgot, Brother Bill, and I never will probably. Brother Sleece, you were there. Sister Nancy, you were there. Down there at that uh, fundraiser for the food bank. And Brother Boykin got up there and he preached a little bit, you know. And I don't know what all he said, but boy, he said something that stuck in my spirit. He was talking about how that the things that the prodigal son had done in their way of looking at things and in their law would have required for him to be stoned. And he was talking about how the father